In this video, I will demonstrate the esterification of cholesterol with acetic anhydride to form cholesterol acetate. The acetylation of the alcohol group serves to protect it from unwanted reactions when doing chemistry at the alkene. However, I'm running this reaction just because I wanted to get some hands-on experience working with steroidal compounds, and this is a very straightforward reaction to start with. So, to begin, 5 grams of cholesterol was weighed out and added to a 50 milliliter round bottom flask. This was followed by the addition of 7.5 mils of acetic anhydride. The flask was then set in a heating mantle, a condenser was attached, and the mixture was refluxed for one hour. At first, the mixture was unable to be stirred, but as it heated up, more cholesterol dissolved, freeing up the stir bar. And once the mixture got up to reflux temperature, it formed a clear yellow melt. Over the course of the reflux, the reaction mixture slowly developed a deep red coloration. After the hour-long reflux has elapsed, the mixture was taken off the heat and allowed to slowly cool down to room temperature. And while cooling, it spontaneously crystallized quite nicely. The flask was then cooled in an ice bath, alongside with 25 milliliters of methanol. The pasty solid was broken up with a spatula and transferred into a glass fritted funnel. Then it was washed in small portions with ice cold methanol, with a total of 25 milliliters being used. The yield of crude material was 4.2 grams, which is 76%. However, the melting point was 109 degrees Celsius, while the literature melting points is 112 to 114 degrees Celsius. So, this material was in need of a recrystallization. And to do so, the cholesterol acetate was simply dissolved in the minimal amount of boiling acetone, and then allowed to slowly cool down and crystallize. The solid mass was then broken up and filtered, washed with a little acetone, and dried thoroughly on the pump. A total of 3.5 grams of cholesterol acetate was obtained as a fluffy white powder. This corresponds to a 63% yield, which is lower than one would hope. However, most of the yield loss was likely during all of the washing steps, which in the end would contribute to a higher purity product and a lower yield. So the first test I did to characterize my product was the melting point. My product melted at 112.6 degrees Celsius, which perfectly fits in the literature melting point range for cholesterol acetate of 112 to 114 degrees Celsius. Next I ran a TLC against the starting cholesterol to see if there was any starting material remaining in my product. For an eluent I used a 50-50 mixture of ethyl acetate and cyclohexane. The plate was stained with permanganate and the yellow spots from the reaction of the permanganate with the alkene in cholesterol and cholesterol acetate can be seen. The stain was developed with a heat gun, making the spots even more clearly visible. You can see that the cholesterol acetate has a higher RF value than the cholesterol, which makes sense since the polar alcohol group in the cholesterol was replaced with the less polar ester group. And based on this TLC, there is no visible starting cholesterol in the product. Since both cholesterol and cholesterol acetate contain chiral centers and are enantiopure, they possess the property of optical rotation, and thus we can use polarimetry as an additional characterization technique. First, I prepared a reference solution of cholesterol dissolved in chloroform at a concentration of 8 grams per 100 milliliters. The solution was transferred into the polarimeter cell and then loaded into the polarimeter. Looking through the side of the polarimeter, a central bar is seen with two half circles. Rotating the dial on the polarimeter changes the angle of the polarizer, which in turn changes the brightness of the central bar in two half circles. Once the position is found where a small change in the dial back and forth results in the inversion of the colors of the central bar and two half circles, the position in the center of the inversion where the colors are uniform will give you the correct optical rotation for your sample. To read the Vernier scale, first look at the zero on the left scale and where that lines up with an integer value on the right scale. In this case, negative 3, since we're below the 0. And then to read the decimal place, look at both scales, and where the two graduations meet perfectly, we'll read the decimal off the left scale. In this case, the value is 8. However, since we're reading a negative value off the Vernier scale, 8 actually becomes 2. And this is the same with the other numbers, so 7 becomes 3, 6 becomes 4, etc. I then prepared a solution of cholesterol acetate in chloroform at a concentration of 8 grams per 100 milliliters. 
I then measured the optical rotation of the solution and found it to be negative 3.6 degrees. Now that I have the optical rotations of both cholesterol and cholesterol acetate, I can calculate the specific rotations. I calculated the specific rotation of cholesterol to be negative 40 degrees, which matches well with the literature value of negative 39.5 degrees. For the cholesterol acetate, the specific rotation was found to be negative 45 degrees, which also matches well with the literature rotation of negative 44 degrees. Also, it's important to keep in mind, when using this type of polarimeter, fairly large amounts of error can be accrued when using low concentration samples, as this decreases the optical rotation of the solution, which is why I used an 8 gram per 100 milliliter concentration instead of 2 gram per 100 milliliter like in the literature values, since my error from reading 1 degree will be much larger than that of reading 3.2 degrees, for instance. So, from all the characterization techniques that I've performed, I'm confident in saying that I've produced cholesterol acetate. Thanks for watching.